All right, all right. Longo's here about to talk to you about some points of concurrency with the special segments we've learned recently with uh, in triangles. So we learned about perpendicular bisectors, and perpendicular bisectors will cut a segment in half, and it also is perpendicular to it. This is the one special segment that does not need to come from a vertex. And all three of them would intersect at a point known as the circumcenter. And the circumcenter's special power is the fact that it is equidistant from all vertices in the triangle. So one of the things you may remember as a perpendicular bisector, any point on it will be equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment you just cut in half and was perpendicular to. So if all three of them intersect in a triangle, that point will be equidistant from all three vertices. On an angle bisector, any point on an angle bisector is always equidistant from all sides. So if you have three angle bisectors of a triangle, then they're going to meet at a point called the in-center, and that in-center will be equidistant from all three sides of the triangle. When medians intersect in the middle of a circle, they create a point known as the centroid, and the centroid's special power is the fact that it's two-thirds from the vertex. Every time you have a centroid on a median, it will split the median into a ratio of two parts to one part, or the centroid is two-thirds of the way from the vertex to the other side. Finally, the altitude. The altitude has a point known as the orthocenter, and it doesn't really have many special powers, but that's the point that is created when you intersect all three altitudes. Okay? So let's start and apply this. For questions number one and two, we're just going to use this diagram here. And I gave you some information over here. And what I want you to do is I want you to solve for x if... In question number one, I'm telling you that M is the in-center. And for question number two, I'm telling you M is the circumcenter. So you will get two different values for X depending on which way you set them up. So obviously the importance of the in-center and circumcenter will tell you which equation you need to use to set these up. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video, think about what an in-center does, think about what a circumcenter does, and solve for X. Let's play when you're ready. So an in-center is the point that is equidistant from all sides of the triangle. So those are our three congruent pieces if M is an in-center. So what we need to do is we need to find BM and DM, and we're going to set those equal to each other because they are distances from that in-center to the sides. So all we have to do is set x plus 2 equal to 2x minus 1. And we will end up with x is equal to 3. OK? Plain and simple. But you have to know what type of relationship the in-center has. And that is equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. For the other one, number two, if M is a circumcenter, circumcenters are equidistant from the three vertices of a triangle. So in this case, we have AM and CM, so we're just going to set 3x minus 4 equal to 2x plus 5, and you'll get x is equal to 9. So if you got x is 3 for number one and x is 9 for number two, then you did this correctly. If you have them switched, then you just need to revisit what an in-center and a circum-center are. Last question of the notes. N is a centroid. So in this diagram, we have a centroid. And we are given that the length of AD, the entire median, is 18. I want to know the lengths of AN and ND. So remember, a centroid special power is the fact that it's two-thirds the way from the vertex or splits the median into a two-to-one ratio. So go ahead and pause the video and then give this guy a try. So doesn't really matter which way you wanted to come up with it, but I always like ratios a little better. So the way I would do it is I would split this up into a ratio of 2x to 1x, so it's in a ratio 
of 2 to 1. And then we know that the entire length of this is 18. So we just use a little bit of segment addition. 2x plus x is equal to 18, which means 3x is equal to 18. And we know that x is equal to 6. Now that we know x is equal to 6, we can substitute it back in. 2 times 6 is 12. And x is just 6. So we have an is 12 and nd is 6. And there you have it. That's what a centroid does. This is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.